<laughs> Dave wants me to take a break. <laughs> You guys got it easy. You get to dig up all those cool colonial relics and coins. You guys are lucky to be living in New England. That's actually what I hear from a lot of people, believe it or not. But I do have to agree with them. We are definitely lucky to be living in this geographical location. But the fact of the matter is that Dave and I were usually only able to hunt once a week. So a typical week will go something like this. Get home from work spend a few hours a night researching during the week. Saturday comes along, set the alarm clock 3.30, 4 a.m. Drive one to two hours minimum to get to the area that we plan on hunting. Hike another mile or two into the woods, hoping and praying that our research is correct and that there is an actual site for us to hunt. And even then, if our research is correct, and we do find the site we're looking for, 90% chance it's already been hunted by someone else. The point is, is that I don't want people to think that Dave and I can just open up our front doors, stick our shovels in the ground and dig up a cool colonial relic. That's just not realistic. You definitely gotta be willing to put in the research and the time. So the key is to think out of the box, be patient, stay persistent, and maybe even have a little bit of friendly competition amongst one another just to keep that desire going and, and push one another. So even after 10 to 12 hours of digging hundreds of holes and being lucky enough to save a few pieces of history, trust me, it makes all that effort worthwhile. Well, it's Saturday morning. Dave and I were out looking for cellar holes. We found one right there. Right there. And uh, there's no stones in it. It's just a dugout depression. But we had a good feeling it was going to be a site because it's on top of this knoll. It's like a knoll right here. It's on top of it. And then it's got stone walls down there. Pile of field stone piles around me. And we pulled out... I don't know, maybe like a half dozen or so tomback buttons, some old buttons, some dandy buttons right around the cellar hole lip and over behind Dave where my machine's lying down I got some silver, some colonial silver so I'm gonna get it on camera <laughs> Dave's a little upset but we just got here so I, I think there's probably more so maybe he'll get his we got our we got our new whites bags that white sent us. Let's see there, it's a nice size and this, this actually rolls out so you could break down your equipment and stick it in the bag. So it's a real, real nice bag. Got plenty of slots for all kinds of stuff. And yeah. So if you need to go on a long hike and break down your equipment, you can just stick it in the bag. So it's real good for that compared to a regular backpack. So it's a nice bag that White sent us. I gotta get my macro camera because I got a small, I got small silver, colonial silver. Why aren't you swinging, man? <laughs> Better start swinging. 
though. It was a, it was a real faint signal. It was probably six, seven inches. And uh, right there. Looks like it's got some good detail on the reverse. So yeah, definitely a half real. Been a few, probably a month or so since we got some Spanish silver. Oh, it's, it's 1773. Nice. Check it out. Don't you want to touch it? Don't you want to touch it? Yeah, got good detail on it. Mexico. <laughs> Might be more here, man. Is that Nick in the air? No, it's dirt. Go have a snack or something. Get out Dave wants me to take a break. <laughs> so that's where I just dug the real. The half rail and I'm still getting another signal in there so just in case I just filled the plug in and went over it again still getting another signal here No, nah, it's just a cuff button. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. Uh, he lost his Spanish silver and his cuff button. You get your heart going though, huh? Yeah, it's so small. When they're small like that, they're so jumpy. Yeah. Sometimes they send off a high signal. Check it again. Maybe it's still out. I think it's a button. Yep. Getting like a 76, it's only like a half inch or an inch here. But... Uh, I see something here. Copper. Is it? Yep. And uh, it's either a state or a KG. Let it dry out for a few minutes, but. I could see the faint outline of a bus right there. I think it's a state. Dave's calling me over. He's got a really good signal, so let's see what it is. Hopefully, it's something good. Hoping it's a copper flash. The cellar hole's right on top of that knoll. He's a ways away from it, but my King George I dug was a decent way from away from the cellar. Right in the path. Better be something good, I got two cameras going. 
my GoPro is going to die in a second, so. Knob. Ox knob. Those freaking get you every time, man. <laughs> I'm the one today, man. That sucks. I just dug uh, another King George. So I got two two King Georges, half three out. Dave's pretty convinced he's got a coin signal. Hopefully it's not another ox knob. It's way over here. Damn, what the heck brought you way over here? I don't know. I just came into the clock. I was going to work along the road. Is it a coin or a button? I don't know. I think it's a coin. Yeah, that's a coin. Rank 75. Coming out now. I think it's a KG. Okay. Does it look like steel letters? They're coming out in the top left. I hope it's a coin, man. It sounds like a coin. Dig it. <laughs> Dig it. Dave's got an 80 VDI. Sounds small, but it might be a coin on edge. Sounds real good, though. Silver. Yeah. Looks like a barber. Or oh, a... yeah, it does. It's a dime. It's like a barber's cedar. Cedar one dime in the back. Right here. 1905? Yeah. Hmm. Take it. Hunter. Maybe. Come on, focus. Yeah, 1723. All really old buttons. Everything's early. All the coins are. You got uh, two King George the Second, King George the First, Spanish Half Real. All early to late 1700 coins and all kinds of buttons. So far, pretty good day.